So I recently pondered the idea of reality being a like a video game. And before that, the question was, is, is reality a trap? And what got me down that trap pondering is the um, this really bad job that I took that it just seemed like I was suckered in. I all, all the doors were just kicked wide open for me to easily move into a position that was a substantially higher pay and looked great. But as soon as I got there, the red flags, everything started going bad. So I started thinking, and I was suckered in. I was just like a like, like a Venus flytrap. I was suckered into this job, and I, I took it, and it was miserable. And then I read David Icke's book, The Trap, and started thinking about these Gnostic ideas of reality being a trap, a, a loose sucking machine. In fact, one of the first books I ever read about the Mandela Effect when I was first Mandela Affected back in September 2016, I went on Amazon and looked for like a Kindle book for the Mandela Effect. And the only one at that time, the only book, there was this uh, this guy, he's been on YouTube. He used to do, I don't know if you remember, the guy that was dressed up like a creepy teddy bear and he would like be all silent, but he'd be like throwing flashcards and, you know, with different words to make you think. And then he'd be dancing and, and stuff like that. His name was smq.ai and he wrote a book and the title was like a possible reason for the Mandela effect or something like that. So I think he wrote that book. It, it's more of a Gnostic perspective and it's a fiction. And I think he wrote that book before he was Mandela affected but then attached the Mandela effect theme to it because it's, you know, an idea of how reality is set up and it's it's a Gnostic view. So that was kind of my first introduction to a Gnostic view, and uh, I'll admit the, the the book he wrote was very creative. It was a it was a good story. I mean, good as far as much better than I could write, and uh, and it held my attention all the way through, and it gave the uh, the a more of a Gnostic view of the of the world. And uh, you know, at the time I was reading, I was like, I don't really understand where he's getting the Mandela effect from except that reality is like this created machine and orchestrated and it's been so long since I read it but I think they were jumping into different timelines and things like that but he was the first book that I ever found talking about the Mandela effect anyway you've got the life is a trap theme you've got the life is uh, a <clears throat> is a video game idea and then the other the other I'd say predominant one the one that that so many people think is is that life is a school a learning experience it's meant to be a growth model for our souls and many people incorporate that into a re reincarnation model where you know each soul is at different levels of development you know, people always say an old soul. Well, the, the idea there is, you know, the older souls have gone through more lives, more life cycles. They've learned more things where the newer souls are just getting started and they, you know, they haven't uh, learned all those things. What are you supposed to learn? You're supposed to learn things like love and patience and empathy and coping skills so you don't freak out every time life gets hard and, and you're supposed to grow as a soul. So if I was a old soul it wouldn't bother me so much that today I lost my job I mean this this <laughs> it's funny because I saw it coming for a long time now but uh, it still hits you it hits you kind of hard when it actually occurs but it was so so unfair so unjust it's uh, a perfect example this is something that, I, that I've had to study recently because I've gone through it I've lived it now but what workplace bullying really looks like most workplace bullying is not overt offenses. Only 9% are really outward, like somebody yelling at you and doing something, some overt thing. Most of the, the workplace bullying has, is more of a, a childish, junior high, cliquish type BS where you get excluded from the group, uh, people withhold information from you, maybe a supervisor pulls you into private meetings all the time and is just overly critical of everything you do. 
every time you you know every time you you make a suggestion or have an idea it's poo pooed dis disregarded like you don't count like you don't have any say or any anything um your 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 ideas are often ridiculed and your question when they question you they question you like you're a criminal suspect i mean it's just it's so uh, like nothing you say is the right thing and this is what i endured almost instantly and part of that is the client uh, a female let's call her liza <laughs> liza was uh, a woman probably about my age but i swear she's in love with one of my facility coordinators a younger girl same age as one of my daughters and she was calling her a hundred times a day i mean it was very weird i mean calling her in the evenings calling her on the weekends they would go on trips to other properties together for quote business you know they just she was she was so attached to this person who was many many layers under me and as far as like title and authority but just uh tight super tight well that relationship when you're when you're the the big boss and you're given that much power to somebody who's a subordinate that person starts assuming they're you know they're it they're they're in charge and completely went around me on everything did not include me on meetings or information i was right from the get-go and and i couldn't understand why even hire me if you're gonna if you're gonna do that but then there was something that happened the first week i was there i'm getting off point but sorry first week i was there um uh, one of my managers said that they had a well that wasn't registered with the county and they're supposed to be reporting that and i was like yeah you you've got to report and pay a usage fee for underground water especially when you're taking when you're taking as much water as we take which is it's a huge complex they took a lot of water you've got to rep so i told them report that immediately i know those people at that office too so i'll call them if we need to anyway um, he did that first week per my order and by the third week it it hit you know the very top of the company because they got a a letter notification of the violation and i was being asked by this liza you know who who told them that we had this i said well i did that's that's our job <laughs> we we have to report these things and, and follow the, the rules and there's nothing that she could say to that so it was about three weeks in that i really started to feel the um targeting too i mean I was feeling pretty ignored the first three weeks, but I was really feeling the targeting, like the negative criticisms and such, three three weeks in. So there might have been a connection to me doing that. I, I don't know. But I, I don't think it would have. I, I think she still had this inappropriate friendship with my subordinate, and she wasn't about to start opening up or, or enabling me to be really in charge from the, from the get-go. But synchronistically i could see as they were getting more aggressive towards me and more bullying and did a official documented write-up on me mid-september like the 17th i knew the wording in that that not only was the write-up completely wrong completely subjective completely trivial completely idiotic and i wrote a rebuttal to it but it was so bad and i knew that it was worded in such a way so that next week they could just turn around and terminate me and the last day they had to, to terminate me was september 23rd uh, on a friday that was that that was the last day they had to do it before hitting my 90 day mark and you want to terminate before you get to 90 days you don't want somebody to be over 90 days because of workers um, unemployment claims and also it's a, a retention thing for the the supervisor did not have the retention issue so they wanted to nail me on that day it was synchronistically september 23rd which is just such a huge day for me before it happened though like right before i launched an official complaint of retaliation against me for being a whistleblower and that that held things up that 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 gummed up their works and uh pushed out my termination to to today but uh it uh i guess i guess it did what it needed to do but the um the sad thing is that the whole job feels like a trap nonetheless and it really just sucks to, to get terminated and not know where you're you know where, where you're going to make that 
money just to pay the basic bills and you got people that are counting on you and supporting you know you support them and they need you to work for them but uh, I'm getting off point and why did I even why did I even go down that road anyway just tell you I'm having a sucky day I guess but is it is is this real this gets me thinking is this whole experience was this a loose sucking trap or was it just a a fail point in my video game experience where I just felt completely drawn into this or is it a learning experience am I supposed to what, what lesson life lesson am I supposed to get from this horrible experience what what great um, understanding of reality to to learn not to get stressed like I, I failed that f completely because I got totally stressed to to not let it bother me to not let it affect my emotions or how I you know act and behave no it totally affected me it, it stressed me out it made me grumpy at times it made me depressed it, it the, the whole experience just sucked so I didn't I didn't pass that with any flying colors at all is it but is it supposed to teach me to to not do it next time or just going through it doesn't make it better doesn't make you not worry about life and even that's biblical to 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 learn to not worry is a very biblical concept in the New Testament in fact that which without faith is sin so I should not worry about the uh, the stupid job or where the where the income is gonna gonna come in I should just have faith right uh, biblically it's also a biblical notion that we go through hard times in life as a learning as a soul spirit learning experience as a purifying experience so that's kind of biblically ties into the whole student uh, learning current learning experience and when I when I was talking with my son about it about whether or not life is a trap he said well you know maybe it or is it a trap or a school? He said, maybe it can be both. Maybe it can be a trap, but you still can make a learning experience out of it. And I said, well, that's a very optimistic viewpoint. Wish I could be that optimistic, but I can't. <laughs> so here, here I am going through the uh, the questioning of the whole. You know, is is this all about just learning, learning to become that better, more enlightened spirit that doesn't freak out when life is threatening and and gets rough. Uh, that one that learns how to love others and have empathy for others instead of being worried about myself all the time and learning to just the coping skills and not having to be on Zoloft or some medication or some stupid thing like that. Who knows? I will say this, and I was quite pleased to have this happen. I had a, I'd say Mandela effect or reality shift, a, a pretty solid, you know. I always talk about anchor memories like... Um, an anchor memory is is you had something and and so many times with the Mandela effect it, the conversations are about it being mis mis memory you know and often that's a memory from your distant past so I say if if your memory from your distant past or immediate past just even recently if that memory is anchored into something pretty solid you know what what happened like maybe you had a conversation with somebody about something very specifically and you always remember it that way because of that so just like cornflakes having a K Kellogg's cornflakes being spelled corn being spelled K O R N and it's it's just like reality to add a little something in there just to muddle it up so there's that that rock group called corn K O R N and they actually did a a promo piece on a Kellogg's cornflakes box where it, it spelled Kellogg's K O R N flakes, which you know that's just like reality to to mix things up and and muddle it up a little bit. But no, I I, I know that it was cornflakes, not because of that. I know it was cornflakes because Jacob Israel did a video on the Mandela effect, and he pointed out that Kellogg's cornflakes was spelled incorrectly it's spelled with K and it's supposed to be spelled corn it's supposed to be spelled C-O-R-N and you know he makes that little sad face like they don't know how to spell anymore <laughs> stuff like that and uh, and I you know I'm walking in the grocery store and I'm acknowledging yeah this is spelled with a K and and then another memory came back to me at the time I was like well it I remember this this it was it was like just a like a social media post where somebody took a, a Kellogg's cornflakes box and they circled the K and it was Kellogg's K 
cornflakes, K, and uh, and the and the um, the flakes. So it was the KKK. They were they were trying trying to say that Kellogg's was a racist company because the the Kellogg's had a K, the corn had a K, and the flakes had a K. The um, and I remember also saying, well, that that could be reaching, you know, that that's stretching the point. That's 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 just looking for a reason to call somebody racist because. To me, it was just a marketing thing. You you spell the corn K because you're matching with you're trying to draw attention to to the brand being Kellogg's. So I have all these anchor memories with Kellogg's cornflakes. So the reason I bring that up, I guess, is just there's a difference between an anchor memory and when you know something's changed versus just a vague. I'm not so sure and. And it's important that we specify when we have an anchor memory. It's important that we not just go along with every change and say, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, recently, I pointed out the um, life is like a box of chocolates um, residue in that stupid movie, um, This is the End. And so there, there's, there were some comments in there about how it's flip-flopping back to where it's now saying life is like a box of chocolates. So... I went in and listened, and the audit in, from from hearing the auditory, I still hear life was like a box of chocolates, but the the titles, the captions, are life is, and what the person's saying is when they first start looking at it, all of the quotes in type on the internet, all of the references to it were saying spelled out was, they weren't saying is, they weren't getting it wrong. And now, there's a majority of them that are that are quoting the movie as life is a box of chocolates. And think about that for just a moment. You've got like a 25, 30 second clip from a movie that somebody uploaded. And they made the title of their upload, Life is a Box of Chocolates. That's the title of the video. And yet it's clearly not saying that when you listen to it. How do they get that wrong? It... it and it, there's a lot of them. So the, the, the thing that's being pointed out is that maybe that's, it's just, it's blended and getting muddled again. And that's, that's sometimes what we see happen with reality. The whole Morton Salt got blended with Morton and Mortons. Um, the Thinker got blended with, uh, George Bernard Shaw doing the pose both ways. The old fist to the forehead and under the chin. And it, the blended reality it gets confusing but the anchor here would be you know i can't say that when i was looking at life is like a box of chocolates that i was actually taking note i might have i just didn't i don't have a hard anchor memory of it but of you know looking and seeing all of the references saying was and now they're flipping over to is but if you're a residual hunter which i really was heavy duty when this all first started that's the kind of thing that i would like take notes on and like really look at you know how many of these links quote it the old way because you know a person who's looking for the residual might say man it's really hard to find anybody even even in print saying life is and now if you look there's tons of them so that's kind of the the blending and the anchor memory so I had this this hardcore Mandela effect reality shift today because two days ago I've been working at the house where my son lives trying to get it fixed up and the, the place is just falling apart really bad but we there's a clean out in the front of the house and there's tree roots that sometimes grow in that thing so we always have to pop that um, cap off there and actually it's a little concrete it's like a little circle piece of concrete every year have to take it off and and run the the auger down that clean out and I was standing outside two days ago just looking at it I was staring at the house, I was looking at the foundation issues that we're having there. And I was looking at that concrete cap that we put on top of the um, clean out, and it was painted dark brown. And I thought to myself, I don't remember, I don't remember ever painting that dark brown. I mean, I, I might have. So, you know, immediately I'm thinking, is that a reality shift? Or, uh, I don't have, I don't have enough certainty here. You know, it could have been something I did, it could have been something my son did. It could have been something even the plumber did when, when he came out to, to work on my house a, a number of times. I've had plumbers out there. 
you know, who knows? It, it just, but the dark brown matched the dirt and every, it matched the house. And I thought, man, I should just like really paint the whole pipe and everything dark brown, make it all blend. But I'm looking at this concrete cap painted dark brown, not remembering when that occurred. And then that was two days ago. This afternoon, I was at the house again. I'm there every day. It's just a couple miles from where I'm living now. I, I'm looking at the same spot in front of the house, and that concrete cap is unpainted. It's just gray. Never been painted dark brown. I was like, now there's there's a solid. I, I know that was painted dark brown just two days ago. And uh, a little, I don't know, I just, I'm, <laughs> you can't tell this, you can't tell this story to anybody <laughs> other than the YouTube world. <laughs> That's it. But. I know it was dark brown just two days ago, so it just it just flip flopped. What is it? What's what good is it though? What what application does knowing that my world around me can change or that I can pop into different realities? What good is it? I still don't have a job. <laughs> you know? I I mean, what is this supposed to teach me if this is a school? What what life lesson am I supposed to get out of knowing that reality is? dynamic that's the word to use now it's not static it's dynamic it changes just like a dynamic workplace <laughs> the reality can change the color of a painted round concrete thing that went over my cl sewer clean out whoop de doo how how is that making me a better stronger spirit i don't know i have no idea that's that's my question to god right now what is the purpose of knowing this stuff? I still freak out when I'm losing my job and I don't have an income. I still feel like crap when somebody tells me they don't want me around anymore. I'm not even, this is so silly, I'm not even allowed to go to the workplace, which is three miles away. I'm not allowed to drive up there and turn in my equipment. You know, I've got two laptops and a cell phone. They won't even let me step on the property. I have to get a box mailed to me a couple boxes so I can mail all this stuff back to them. Speaking of which, this one kind of hurts. My, the job that I quit before that, the one that I gave my heart and soul to for over five years, sacrificed unbelievable amounts of myself, my time. Really, I really gave. I, I completely gave to that place. And uh, immediately after quitting, I'm, I've got this like ban against me being on property. Like, like it's so terrible that if I set foot on property, I've done so much for the place and I'm, I'm not even allowed to even step foot on property because I, because I quit, which was a dumb move. And I know, ah, just sucks. Everything, it sucks to live with regret. It sucks to not have a job. It sucks to be rejected. It sucks to wonder about, you know, where your finances are going to go next and the people that depend on you how this is going to affect them. All of that sucks. So if this is a school, I'd like to know how this is making me a better spirit. And if the Mandela effect has any purpose at all, what is it? What What is the point of me noticing that a s concrete circle <laughs> was painted two days ago and not today it's not painted? Or that life was or life is a box of chocolates or the cornflakes has changed or or any of these stupid things that have been going in and out. Yes, I know. I know reality is not completely real. But how does that benefit me? How does it benefit anybody? Because until you remove life's, this matrix, until you re remove its ability to cause me real pain, you've got to take away the pleasure and pain issue. Because as long as this thing can inflict pain, I'm going to worry about it because I don't like pain. I don't want to go through pain. I don't want to suffer. I'm not a big, big fan of these things. So, you know, remove that element of the game, of the illusion, and we're, you know, that's fine. Then, then, then I don't care if they fire me. But, uh, but losing, losing a job sucks. And it does suck to be rejected too. It sucks to be told that, that you're not needed. Now, now the, that one, I don't know why. I don't know why that should really bother me. I mean, you remove the pain and the suffering. Who cares if they don't want you? But again, young soul here. That'd be a good name for a YouTube channel. Young soul here. Anyway, that's uh, my Mandela effect and my pondering about life being a school. 
Hope you're having a better day than me. God bless.